We begin with tonight's top story where at least 12 tornadoes touched down in central Georgia, one of them being right here in the Columbus metro area. Three fatalities were reported in the county warning area of the Peachtree City Weather Forecast Office. Preliminary damage reports have been conducted by six news teams. In the North Columbus metro area, there was an EF2 tornado that touched down with wind speeds between 113 and 158 miles per hour. The traveled a path 7 miles long and was about 300 yards wide. The heaviest damage was located in the 6200 block of Brookstone. We begin our coverage in the neighborhood of Green Island Hills on Lake Oliver, where it first hit. The neighborhood of Green Island Hills just off River Road may not have the heaviest damage from the EF2 tornado that hit the northern Columbus metro area. However, it is the first place to take the full force of the storm. The once tree-shaded community is the site of numerous broken trees, downed power lines, damaged cars, and homes. Homeowners say that it used to be very shady from all the tree cover. Now you can easily see the sky. This is all that's left of homeowners Dr. A.C. Alvarez and his wife Bridget's home where the tornado had first hit land. Trees line the roof and almost make the house unrecognizable from the front with all the trees covering it. Dr. Alvarez was kind enough to share his frightening story of what happened the night of March 1st. We had made reservations to dinner at the club because it was my patron same day. It was about 6.25 and the weather was worsening so we decided to, uh, to stay home. And we started watching the weather channel and that's when we heard the names of uh, uh, Southern uh, Harris County and Northern Muscoy County and there they became more specific about Green Island. So we paid more attention until we saw the, the writing underneath that said if you have a place to hide, if you have a shelter, go there now. Dr. Alvarez told us how he could see the tornado up close from his basement window. And so we raced down, but my wife lost the dog on the way down so she started looking for her and I screamed at her to please follow me and get into the sauna. Well she never made it because uh, uh, the, the, when I got in the sauna the door just locked. Immediately as we were down we looked through the window outside the downstairs window and we could see the storm up close. It was a gray winding cloud. We saw the trees bending over and breaking. At that moment, we just raced, like I said, I raced into the sauna. She took a few more seconds and she stayed in the bathroom next door because she could not get in. He also told us it was only a matter of seconds before the tornado hit their home. From the time we were in the kitchen until the, the noise started downstairs, we were about 20 seconds. Dr. Alvarez also told us what it was like while the tornado was bearing down in their home. We heard this horrible noise, the trees falling on top of the house, the roof crashing and cracking, the beams falling down all above our heads. She kept asking me if I was doing okay, and I returned the question, are you doing okay? We, could, we were talking through a door, through a wall, because we could not see each other, and we were in the dark. Dr. Alvarez told us it did not sound like the freight train everyone claims they hear. The reason we didn't, I think, is because it was coming through the lake. So the noise didn't start until, until they got to the backyard of the house. So we, some of my neighbors have mentioned that noise because once it gets inland, it probably does make that noise. But I did not hear it until the very last second. To him, it seemed like a long time, but it only lasted a minute or two. It went on for about, I don't know, it looked like a long time, but it wasn't. It probably was just a minute or two. At that point, the noise stopped. All we heard is just the beams crashing and, and, and breaking and, and we heard all this noise and like the whole thing was falling on us. So my wife screamed and said, we have to get out of here. And I said, I can't, I'm trapped. I can open the door of the, uh, of the sauna and all I heard it, and all I felt was uh, walls around me in total darkness. Well, she, she, she left and I didn't hear a noise after that. So I assumed she had gotten hurt badly by one of the beams or something because I couldn't hear anything. At this time, Dr. Alvarez was trapped when his wife came to rescue him. After about uh, a lot of praying and a lot of uh, terror, my wife, I heard my wife shouting my name. So I, I answered and I said, I'm here. So I, I, I saw a flashlight 
through through San area where I was, and uh, she finally got close to where I was and said, "Can you get out of there?" I said, "No, I can't." So she started uh, flashing all around with the light, and finally she found like a little hole in the opposite direction that I was looking, not towards the lake, but in the other uh, behind me, and and. Uh, we look at the hole and if we feel like it was big enough for me to sneak out through it, and I did. I was just, uh, I, I, I remember going inside and pushing and <laughs> squeezing myself out of it and I finally got out. So she said, then just follow me now. And she just got on, you know, like a, like a, like the, uh, like a little training young guy at Fort Benning, you know, we just, we just were reeling like that, like two snakes. And that's the way we got out. And, uh, and uh, we got out of the house and I, took a deep breath and I, and I thank the Lord. Finally, we asked Dr. Alvarez if he thought his house was the first one hit. I will think so because uh, looking across the lake, I don't see damage on the other side of the river. Dr. Alvarez and his wife Bridget did tell us they are planning to be rebuilding on that lot. They are currently staying in an apartment. As for the rest of the Green Island Hills community, they will continue the cleanup process to get lives back to their normal, regular routines.